<laughs> what? Well, he's off, guys. <laughs> there it goes. Fantastic. He just he just booked it right there. We'll keep you up to date with which uh, what's getting bad and picked. Yes. So I'm uh, gonna assume a beast master. Where's that bad boy at? Uh, I mean. What? The, with the B. What makes Beastmaster so good, Grand? Are you? Grand? What? <laughs> what? I'm asking for those at home who may not know. His boar did get nerfed now, but you can you summon a boar, and then at uh, level 7, when you have the level 4 Call of the Wild, you summon a random creep. And we saw, like, a complexity when Moo did it. He was playing before this buff. He was getting Helm of the Dominator first, and he would just get a creep. And you can solo kill anyone. And now with the buff to Axes plus getting a random creep, like, you literally summon a boar, and now you have a hellbear. Why? Why is that a thing? I'm actually just confused. Like, oh, here's a hellbear. Okay. It's the creep rebellion, you know? Okay. Okay, clockwork. Whoa. He's not just a beast master. He's a beast friend. They just want to show up and help him out. There's that clockwork ban, which seems pretty right after that game. Nature's profit. Grant, Grant, if you had beast master's power to randomly summon any uh, Dota personality, <laughs> what would it be? What do you mean? For what? You know. Why am I summoning him? You just, if you could just summon any Dota personality. For what? What purpose? I like, mean, same purpose as Beastman. To chill you know? with? Just to chill or do whatever, you know? Any Dota personality, player pers or yeah. just personality Who'd caster. Who'd be on the, the, uh, the summon? You'd just be sitting on the couch and then you summon and be like, go get me a cookie. Why would you? Well, Why would I want some, one of my friends to give me a cook? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> who said you'd have to, have to have one of your friends on the summon? Yeah, you could have your enemy. Yeah. <laughs> they could oh. be in the middle of a cast and you could summon them. I don't know, you know. I, one, one man should not have all that power. <laughs> it would be Merlini. <laughs> Merlini. Okay, great. Winter Wyvern ban, what a surprise. I wish Five I could summon Merlini right now so I could have a good analyst. Oh, yeah, not that I called every single lane. <laughs> but no, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, you, it's you've done good too, Slack. Don't worry about it, it's fine. Rubik! Uh, we have a Rubik too? Rubik and a Bane. Oh, we do get the Bane. Oh, the mid or feed Bane. This was a classic before Bane was good. And my dreams come true. Ooh. Night Stalker picked, not Bane. So wait, Bane's dire now, right? That Bane is, is on the radiant radiant. side. Oh. Okay. Your life. <laughs> yep. And I don't know. I. So what's with Night Stalker? That's actually tough. Night Stalker owns. I think he's gonna, Bane's just going to be a, a simple support here in the safe lane. Then you're going to have Five, Night Stalker, seven, Rubik. I don't know, Night Stalker's just good, but there's so many other heroes to ban now. He got a little bit nerfed, but still nighttime vision. Yeah. You get yeah. to four minutes in, and, I mean, you're going to get kills. Vision's always open. So he's just going to be roaming around in the river again. But you're shit during daytime now. Hey, Because during daytime, you got nighttime language. vision of other heroes. Rubik. What's right? wrong with you? Using the S word. Oh. <laughs> Diet. <laughs> That's not that bad of a word. How could you? Is it? What? That's a spirit breaker. What's, what's bad? Nothing. Nothing. All right. So he was just Rubik. talking like a sailor over well, here. That's super day. weird because usually Rubik's played four, but you already have a Night Stalker, <laughs> so you're going to have him in the safe lane here. <sighs> and a Spear Breaker. Ten that guy is remain. something else. Is he good now, Grant? He's, I mean, when was he not good? I don't know. Five Dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he could just. Up, uh, uh, and this guy, I think these two are going to be about the same again. Oh, wait, yeah. They're both just going to be roaming around in the river together. Much like we saw before, except, you know, Tusk failing. No, be, uh, Spearbreaker just changes the game, right? He can run around. Level one, your middle's never safe unless you have something like a Marana, mm -hmm. which I believe is banned out. So you just game charge over. anyone. Invoker's bad. Invoker's just terrible. Yeah, that, like, hero's off the map team. against Spearbreaker. A lot of heroes just get taken off. You can't play in Spearbreaker. Larky is banned out. That's an interesting Lark and Lark, ban. Huh? How are you going to ban a Slark? I thought he was garbage tier right now. Uh, he got uh, Miracle played it really well, but that's Miracle, so who well, knows? Sure. I think it's pretty bad. Miracle could play an uh, ancient Go. creep Ten game, probably. probably. <laughs> Intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> Five seconds That'd be a fun remaining. challenge. Lycan is L-Y, right? Uh, yes, that is true. Are we sure? Yes. Maybe. Quite positive. Don't worry about it, buddy. Got Lycan banned out. Lycan banned out. Pretty good hero. Still, and then you got the uh, the Night Stalker, which would only help the other team every time Night Stalker does his old. Lycan gets more powerful. Can't have that, Chiefs. Yeah, Lycan just, I mean, now Book. Book's kind of bad in the early game. Level one Book's like really good, but after that, I don't know. Still feels like a weird hero. I really like a or a gimmicky thing of Bane against Night Stalker. You nightmare him, and all of a sudden, all that great vision is just gone. Oh. You know what? That's There's so smart. many heroes now that interact with nighttime. Where's our daytime? It's only oh, common. I mean, Night Stalker now has one. Daytime, he's 
Not great. Well, that's you not an interaction. That's, <laughs> it is an interaction. Well, even it's even last game, I mean, it's the Wyvern, right? Wyvern at level 15 has a oh, nighttime talent. Why? Really yeah. And it owns. Like, let's give this hero even more vision to go into the Roche <laughs> pit and ulti everyone. Okay, sure. Sounds good. Puck. And Darkseer. Puck's good. That's all I have to say about that. That's Puck's good. is good. I mean, the only change is that it does more damage when the coil breaks and does zero when you put it on. And we've seen you can't TP out of coil now because it does 350 damage remaining. at level one on huh. break. Huh. And it, it breaks out of TP. It's super good. Five wow. Remaining. A little too good. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh. Well, Puck, I mean, why didn't Puck, like, actually get a nerf, right? He was first picked every, pretty much every game, middle and off laner. Like, he's just good at everything. Sure. He, she, what, what is Puck again, it's, Slax? It's a Zare. What's that? It's a, it's a term. It could be anything it wants. It's 2017. Puck could be whatever he, it, Zara wants to be. Is Zara like it's race? <laughs> and I'm lost. Is that what? I think that's what you say. If you don't want to say, oh, okay, Sand. you know, Sand King. That guy, that guy's made out of sentient sand. And this is going to be that thing you, you assume it's going to be an offlaner, but they tricked me last time. But <laughs> Could be a that's core guy. mid Sand King. Would it otherwise be a nice soccer core? Yeah, it would have to be, but I think the only person I've seen play that was, like, MSS back on Team NP. So that one I'm going to be highly doubtful yeah. about. So Sand King off lane, Night Stalker, four. Right, that's, that's pretty five. straightforward. So yeah. last time, Vega Squadron was missing a lot of team fight. I think that's kind of solved right now. Uh, if, if the Sand King gets farm. If the Sand King doesn't sure. get farm, you don't get a Blink Dagger, then, I mean, what does the Sand King do? Run in, stun, and die. Yeah, but um, if, yeah. Sandstorm, you know? He can do that. Yes, sure that's can. <laughs> Love Sandstorm. Unless he gets silenced. Remember when you used to like actually max Sandstorm and you just farm the jungle? That was like, he was the whole reason the jungle was nerfed, right? Yeah. Like that hero single-handedly. I mean, he was a real, he ruined it for everybody. Legion players hate him. Dire team pick. Mm. Okay. Magnus, there's some team fight for a mid or feed. Oh, hell yeah. Have you guys ever actually seen a jungle Legion in your games? I never have. Oh, yes, I have. Oh, they're, yeah, they're around. All right, so Magnus. I mean, that's just going to be off lane, more than likely. I find it interesting that both of the teams are, are doing kind of the same. You've got yourself the position five with the disable. You know, good also can do a lot more when it reaches level six. You've got yourself a four position that can be very active very early on. You're going to have your team fight off laner that just needs a blink dagger. Yeah, but I they're mean, going to the same route. Mid or feed, though, their job is so much easier. Yeah, you, you know? Magnus just, a, right, they're going to get a PA or a Juggernaut here. Right. And then he's going to be farmed no matter what. I don't know. that it Already is. I love Magnus drafts. Just be, well, I don't like watching them, but if it's on your team, like, playing it, it it's so easy. You just, ro you have a Spearbreaker Bane, two of the best, like, roaming supports. Then you just have a Magnus. Hey, I'll get six help, and I'm just going to empower Tomato, whatever he is, and he's going to be farmed no matter what. Yeah. I mean, uh, Vega has... They have, they have, like, good vision, but they have so many things that have to go right. Rubik has to steal a decent spell. Sand King has to get a decent amount of farm. I mean, mid or feed, they just have to play, and they already are going to win. Do you feel like they need some extra vision? Like, are there any heroes they could go for that could fix their vision issue? I mean, <sighs> Parasite the Fungal Warrior would be really good in this game. Yeah, it's not as interesting <laughs> hero, <laughs> actually. But I, oh, uh, sniper. Hey, what's sniper. that? Sniper. There we go. There's a little vision Close for you, Chief. He's on the wrong team. Well, you know. How are you going to pick Sniper against a Spirit Breaker Magnus? Well, those are two heroes that break the back line pretty damn easily, aren't they? Yeah, that's yeah. super weird. Yeah. So wait, Vega. Ten seconds it's gonna be, ah, middle or safe Dyer lane? Slacks, uh, give me the call. Middle Ten or safe lane on a Sniper? Six. Oh, God. It doesn't matter. Well, against a PA, you, you got to go safe lane. Yeah. Because PA more than likely is going to be middle here. Oh, God. Look at this draft. He's just going to follow Sniper about. I could be wrong. PA, I mean, PA can go safe lane or, or middle. We'll see. <laughs> oh. PA. All right, Grant. You got to solve this puzzle piece. Oh, what is Vegas Squad just thinking here? What, what is their la final pick to make this thing work? Because um, they have so many heroes that pierce the back lane to jump on Sniper. Literally, PA is made for that. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, it's a good question. It just feels like once again, mid or feed. I mean, now that you have a Magnus PA, right? That that combo alone, you could have like three random heroes, and Magnus PA is so good, huh? Uh, what they, a, you, you know? They need another. They already have a frontliner, Five Night Stalker as well, Sanking. I feel they just need. They want some like a Puck or a Quap. It absolutely could just be a. a well, they ban out Quap themselves, so I'm completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Tree. Um, they must have a plan.
Queen of Pain. And Puck. So both of them banned out. Wait, Puck was already... Am I crazy? No, I'm not crazy. <laughs> why is uh, why is Lena not there at all? Lana? Uh, yeah. Spirit Breaker. Like, Spirit Breaker is just so good. Same with Bane. You can just set up so easily. I mean, we're Lina. like in general. We don't see her at all. I think we, we're still yeah, you're right. a... we only saw her once. I don't know. Just... Navi's running her. Need I say more? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what? They, they were are. winning. No, you're right. I mean, Navi how dare you make fun of new Navi? Know. Still a ton of burst damage, but against all these like four run at use, like Lena can't stop a clockwork. Lena can barely yeah. stop a spear breaker if you time it correctly. That's a void. It is a bad. Wait, bad is it void. faceless void or just void? I would imagine that they did faceless void. All right, you're correct. Ten seconds remaining. <laughs> Ooh, good, good call, James. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen there. Yeah, You're genius. Very interested to see what they go here. I'm... There's no way they go sniper mid, right? Well, if they have a void ban, it kind of means that they are anticipating a sniper mid. Right? Right. But sniper versus PA? Maybe they're still expecting... With a spirit like... breaker to put on pressure <laughs> at level one? <laughs> like... I don't. This is like... Oh. Both teams could go either way. Sniper could go safe lane as well as that. Oh, Zeus. Oh, so hell yeah. It is going to be laid up. Gentlemen, ladies, PA back over here in the safe lane. There's man. only one word that needs to be said in this match: Nimbus. <laughs> what? Nimbus. Oh, nim apparently there was a bug with it when I was playing earlier. You, well, no, it was you, Shiver. Yeah, Didn't you, you say, can't see the circle. Can, there's no circle anymore. You just see the cloud. But there's the, no circle. It depends on where you place it, but because sometimes it, oh. it disappeared into the fog and then out of the fog, you actually saw the circle, but the circle sometimes disappears. So now I think Sniper actually goes back middle. It's Against event. the Zeus, it's not bad. And then wait, what's the last pick? Vengeful, yep, that will be a vengeful carry, my friends. Oh yeah, that that does mean that G, <sighs> yeah, G will be playing the sniper, so it's a sniper mid. Yeah, but then, a but Rubik's Zeus. Venge? Oh. How are they gonna live? Come on, <laughs> how are they gonna have any life? All right, but it's, um, huh. Huh. I don't know, it just feels like mid or feeds draft all around is better, but I guess there's a lot of stuns and slows up on Vega, if you sure. can get like the ball rolling, yeah, sure. All right, Grant. I mean, I'm just gonna go with mid or feet, just mid or draft feet. better. I don't want to say this. I, uh, I'm gonna go for Vega again. <laughs> again, I think I've always gone for Vega in Dream League, and they've let me down every time. And this time, it won't happen. You jinxed them. <laughs> Minor feet for me as well. <laughs> I think they have the, the stronger draft. And uh, as we said already, three picks in, easier to execute. We're going to find out, though, if that is actually the case or if Vega can get some points on the board. It is over to Odie Pixel and Fog. Thank you very much, Chief. Indeed. Are you ready, Fog? I'm ready. I'm ready for this. We've got some Magnus PA action. And we go got Vega Squadron. Try something, as you were saying to me at the start of the draft. You prefer their approach. At least you did at the start. I did, but, but now we're back to the what the core knights. Again, these heroes that it doesn't seem like you like seeing them in a core position. I mean, they. I, uh, I mean, we'll see for this time. This time he wants to be able to put pressure and he wants to force the supports to stay up there as the Night Stalker. And I guess they don't really like the Night Stalker. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't get it. I, I. I personally just don't. I don't really know what they're. I mean, yeah, you, you gotta like the core Night Stalker a bit more than the core task in twenty sixteen. Yes, that's, absolutely. That's a step that's up. That's for sure. That's a movement but in the right direction. I look at Midterfeed's lineup, and oh, this is something else we should point out. Cinderin is not playing the Bane. He's not because he is now the four. He's playing he's, the Breaker. He is Cinder and Spirit Breaker. I mean, his map movements, a game one, were absolutely brilliant on the clock. And we were uh, See what it is on the spirit. We were talking about how now Spirit Breaker versus Night Stalker. It's been a pick that people have been doing a lot, but now at level ten on Spirit Breaker, you get the Night Vision talent. So very good versus Night Stalker for those nighttime movements. And uh, yeah, I mean it's a Phantom Assassin versus a Sniper. This is like one of the better matchups, and, and they also have a Zeus yeah. to find the Sniper, so they can Zeus oh, exactly. ult, and then PA can just jump into the back lines. It, it, they have a lot of liberty for like uh, information for like, interfeed. I'm, I'm sure they do have the save. Low Arts will be there, has the swap, but again. It's a core venge, and and this is a hero that the farm is just not going to be anywhere near comparable to to a PA Magnus. You know, he's got to go mask of madness. He's he got to go for up. this action early on. As the panel said, if they get the ball rolling early, they've got a lot of stuns. G Sniper is is a very good sniper. You know, this is one of his best heroes in my eyes. That in the past we've seen G just you know absolutely just steal games with his sniper performances. And G was pretty on the ball game one, as we were saying. G and Aloha Dance looks like. You know, looked like they were here to play Doha. Game and, one, they were doing fine. You know, we are harping a bit, and the the one thing about Sniper is I like when Sniper has a uh, a steroid, like some yeah, kind of okay. bloodlust, something like that. They have at least the Venge Aura to at least give him that, and they do have a lot of like stuns and disables to kind of zone from him. But I'm still I'm really like Midterfee just has such a well-rounded lineup. It's it's just so so nice looking. I guess we have a pause or something.
I mean, at the moment, we're still what? Who's not taking Cancel their hero? Cancel. The Zeus. Cancel. Is yeah, not not yet selected the Zeus. In theory, Cancel can die a lot, but I think as a Zeus, you should just be sitting back, for the most part, and then just waiting for the Spirit Breaker to charge in. Because Spirit Breaker Zeus, we've seen this con this combo like time and time again. How much yeah. you can really do? You have the chase, you have the catch from the Breaker, and you have the damage from the Zeus. The combo is there. Let's see what Slayer can do on the Rubik, because, like I said last game, I mean, Slayer, he has to be the big playmaker. He has to do a lot for Vega for them to actually get those wins, because, I mean, that's just the way they play. Anytime he has a poor game, they have a horrendous game. I mean, I'm looking at the steals as well. There's not really, it's not, it doesn't seem like an incredible game for Rubik in terms of spell stealing. No, it's, definitely not. He's uh, good versus Bane. He's decent versus Mag. And then he's got instant disable for spirit. Yeah, he can, can put a stop to, yeah, to Sin's movements early on, which they certainly needed. You know, we saw that that was sort of the struggle that matchup, as you said, in game one. Sin being on the yeah. clock, Slayer being on the Nyx Assassin. It wasn't great for the Nyx Assassin. This no. time around the matchup, at least Slayer has a bit of an answer for the way that Sin's going to try and play. But he doesn't match up well. That's the one thing. Huh? Big matching up versus a okay. Bane, it's not good in the one, like in the laning roaming. If you're trying to move around the map, these hero out moves you. Spirit Breaker, same thing. So it's like. They really need to be able to move with both heroes when I look at Vega. Like, Rubik and Sand King are going to be needed to make the kills with the Venge. But Sniper is one where he can get kills alone with the Sand King. Or with the Rubik. Sniper just does an Im immense amount of damage and chase. It looks like, according to chat, Cancel has just vanished, apparently. Cancel's gone. He says he's vanished. Since he's vanished, he hopes there's nothing bad. And, of course, Tomato puts in the, the hashtag pray for Cancel. As, uh, and, and he's also type press. Well, a rude oh, word for chat. respect. Yeah, <laughs> Tomato having some jokes here. Just, yeah, the, the rude word in Russian that begins with B for respect. Don't do that, chat. I was Boy, looking at the other chat. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? How What's they... going on in this chat? Uh, they're oh, just doing... voting for who's going to win the game. They're voting right now. Does someone, someone type hashtag liquid? I mean, I know they're a good team, but I don't think they're winning games that they're not even playing in. Uh, chat, that's, that's not quite possible yet. We've got to wait for Dota 3 before we, so, we allow sort of competitive interceptions where a new game can tag team in. What cool talents do we have on these heroes that we haven't seen? I'm looking forward to the Venger. The Venger's great. A bit cool. of a play this game. What's, I haven't seen, uh, I don't remember all of Zeus's right now. Yeah, check out so They're pretty similar though. The arc lightning damage change I think is at 25 and the lightning bolt is still there. Oh yeah, but now you get an XP gain. Okay. And, so, oh, the movement speed. 40. Oh, 40 movement speed it... over 1% static? Dude, 40 movement speed's a lot. I guess, I mean, you do proc static feel quite a few times in the fights. So, you know, that 1% does add up. But 40 movement, but 40 movement speed is, is, a is a lot. It is a lot. And in a game like this where you are going to have like an SK and a night uh, nice oh, dog. these are nice. These, these talents are nice. Well, what'd you take at 20? That's, that's what I mean. Do you take the like, lightning bolt mini center? Cool down, cool down reduction is pretty dreamy. You get 15%. It's not. Yeah. I guess I, you'll I, just get an Octarine anyway. Like your spell's pretty low cooldown, well, very low cooldown anyway, other than the ultimate, so I don't know. Surely, I think you take the But they're the nice. Stuff. You can get six armor to a 10, dude. You're going to be beefy. Oh, these stuff, are, they aren't that nice. Dude, they're I'm not, not that dude, blown away by nice. these talents. Oh, now we see ourselves. Oh, Hello. Right. Well, these guys have probably seen us for a while. Looks like... Oh, that's now. Cancel is back. He's back. Okay. He's back. We're good. Thank you for your, your prayers and messages that were sent this way. It did work. Cancel is now back in the game. Okay, let's see what he can do. And I'm ready to play. So as you said, this mid lane matchup, Zeus should farm. Yeah, they will farm. But G, he's got the potential to put some harassment on this Zeus. If he stays full and there's a few points on the shrapnel, Zeus can get run down, especially sure. with a, well, with what would be either a Rubik or a SK gang. One of these heroes comes into the mid lane, and Zeus has got to be careful. I think that's what we're just going to I think we're going to be right. seeing like some 3v3 mid this game, okay. to be honest, because Temp... Uh, PA, Phantom Assassin can be left alone after a couple levels because it's just a Night Stalker. Sure, it's high armor, but you just throw daggers, you're going to get your last hits just fine. So I think there's going to be a lot of rotations coming to that mid lane. Probably just TPs very early. If the Sanking makes a move, Weeha TPs. I think Syndrine's going to just, I mean, he's Spirit Breaker. He's going to be charging everyone oh, the yeah. whole game. And we're good to go, ladies and gentlemen. The game as we go. Game Thank you very much for holding with us. But we can finally get on with we game two, four, mid or feed. Up against Vegas Squadron. Game one was a bit of a write off for Vegas Squadron. And we'll see if they're able to step it up this time round. And as we've been saying already, their lineup is looking much better sure. to play. Definitely. And they're already right off the bat. They're going for a smoke boy. So are they going to do some kind of strange lanes? Maybe that's what they I want. I mean, they, they can run Maybe aggressive. they do the Night Stalker in a 1v1 versus the Mag and they go aggro. That could be a possibility. I would, I'd like to see that from Vegas. That could be nice. They're going to get their smoke broken and Midderfeet's going to walk. Yeah. Okay. And um, with this, 
I mean, it does. With this reveal, I won't be surprised if they keep down here. They, they are going to make the decision as they know the laning situation. Do they want to keep the lower dance down or aggressive, or do they want to get him up top? Well, see, at the moment, aggro. His mag's got boots. Okay. So Afterlife will do very well up there. And if they just leave Afterlife alone bottom, he won't do well at all. I think this is the better play for them, doing the aggro tri lane yeah. this game. Yeah, I like that. Much better. So yeah, and that's, yeah, they're going to keep it. They have a multi-stun tri lane. I mean, do middle feed then change their lanes because of this? PA can still farm. Yeah. That's the one thing. I don't think that they really need to. Like, Spirit Breaker is just going to be moving around the map anyway. I think the next, the thing that they need to do is just punish the fact that it's a tri lane bottom. So Spirit Breaker just chain, keep charging mid lane. So we see the double TPs coming out. Both of them going to block their mid lane. And G actually messed up. Oh. G has messed up his block. There is a melee creep in front. Look, oh, look no, it G. He TP'd Not to get this like block. Not like this. Oh, God. Okay. So the momentum will be there. The range creep's going to get hit. But, okay, both both sides have lane wards. He's going to auto attack it a bit. Yeah, but of course, Cancel, once he got a couple of levels, he's going to be taking that ward out. If he knows what's what. And uh, he should. Started with a no on the Zeus as well. We used to see just a straight bottle rush, but he wants to go for the stats. He's even going for the double no to go for the veil early. And he's getting headshotted a lot. Oh, I like the pick of the no because. For the base damage. Yeah, exactly. And, and especially with you know, denies being that that much more punishing. It's true. In the lane. So it you do it, want yeah. to have a, at least a chance of being able to get some of the denies against this sniper. So yeah, stat stats are always good yeah. in like the 1v1 matchups. That does make sense for sure. I mean, as we see, you know, geez, he's really pummeling into Council. This is, it can be a risky lane for the Zeus if, uh, if G's allowed to close the gap. He's not using his Arc Lightning really at all. He's like saving all his mana. He's really just using it to when he only can, when he can't get the last hits with auto attacks. And these lanes, as we've said, seeming to, to set out exactly as, as Vega Scorch and hope for. I think this is, a, this is a bit better for Vega here, because yeah. the Night Stalker won't get zoned, and that's really important for them. No, absolutely. We saw how much of a tough time Afterlife had in game one against the tri lane of middle feed. So getting him as far away from that as they can this time around. Bottom lane really kicking off between the two support sides. We'll go in with the burrow strike. Try and surround this man. They'll just jump forward oh, onto oh, that's get Aloha right. Yeah, that's the first blood. That's the carry. That is, yeah, the, the biggest kill out of the three of them, and they get it, middle feed. PA, Tomato's not really farming creeps, though, because sure. it is a, you know, triple stun lane that they do have coming out from Vega at the moment, which is a little bit threatening. How's top doing? Kezu's actually doing just fine versus Afterlife. I mean, this is going to be a trade farm lane. Mag has the Quelling Blade. Yeah, but Quelling Blade oh. and Empower, it's, it, I think this is tough for the Nine. Kezu just tried to try... Oh, uh, actually, we can look at bottom. They're going on Zayats here. Should be okay. Tomato's jumping forward, though. They have a dagger. If they want to commit, they don't. Uh, Kezu actually tried to buy a bottle from the uh, side shop there. Feels and he messed up, and then he rebought it. It's going now. Okay, one of the bounties. He's actually going to get both bounty wins as well by looks of it. Bottom lane. And again, looking for Zayas. The telekinesis from Slayer. Buying some time for Vega Squadron. And it is enough. Vega will keep themselves both alive. They turn back towards Weeha. And this Bane, Spirit Breaker, they're, they're pretty tanky in the lane. Quite hard for Vega Squadron to, to beat into them. As you say, the... They're certainly slowing down the farm of the PA. You know, it's not great for Aloha Dance, but it is more than that of this PA. Fox would like item record with this. What have, you what have you done, Fox? I was, I was clicking on items. Look at this mid lane. Cancel. Getting run down. All the shrapnel charges have been used, though. So cancel. We'll be able to slink away in the tree. I like that he didn't go for the second no. I think this was really important. He needed to go for the bottle yes. for the regen. Okay. Not for just the mana, but for the lag, for the HP. A bit of lag from middle feed side. Packet loss. Oh dear. That ain't great. Lane's though. Definitely going slightly in last hits at least Vega favor. And is he? Yeah, it's much better than game one yeah. already. I mean, you for a start, you haven't got Sin moving around the map making these plays because he can't. He's got to stay down bottom and at least alleviate some of the pressure uh, that this, this aggressive trial from Vega Squadron was putting on. Responses we used to see happen. Yeah. Back in the day, like you're playing versus a hero that wants to roam around, you aggro him so he stays in the lane. So, we're back. So, so it's certainly a good call to make so far, no doubt about that. Suggestions are not closed for me. How come I can ask for. I, I didn't even click anything, I swear. I guess I. What did you press? I guess uh, I clicked this little pressed. question mark. I didn't yeah. even know that existed. Nothing. Oh, no. Definitely no feeding this time from Afterlife. In no. fact, he's 
He's having quite the time, as you said. It is a total trade of farm up there. Hansel's going to have to go to base, as the Zeus, it seems. He's got good last hits, but getting zoned out by the sniper a bit. So G will lead in the experience department, at least top, or uh, in the mid lane. G. And he's going to be scared. Once that level 5 kicks in, this is very easy for, for this sniper to run down this is yeah, yeah, three points in shrapnel you, you're good to go you've yeah. got a lot of kill potential literally any rotation they can yeah. go for the kill like a rubik comes in a sanking comes in a night dog comes in they will get that kill bottom lane we hop playing very aggressively they don't even they're not even interested in going for him Zayas is like guys there's a good kill here now they're turning with the stun with the terror they have the triple disable will be enough level three on bane does he get the brain top off he does not a lot of disable indeed from Vega Squad and charge coming in for and this is the thing, you know, as soon as Sin is out of the lane, Vega know they've got the numbers, they know that they can make that move and it's very hard for Afterlife comes down as well. Yeah, for middle feet to put a stop to it. Yeah, they're looking for more. Burrow strike into the magic missile. This is some great aggression from Vega Squadron. Spell damage nukes versus PA. Afterlife making that early roam as soon as the nighttime hits. I like this. He has the phase boots already anyway, so he's yeah. committing. He, he might even get this. Council's going to help by some time to turn it around. They get the hit with the bash. And that's going to mean Afterlife can't get the sing kill, but he himself will also not get the, taken down. He gets himself back. And uh, definitely a game where, yeah, this is not the smooth sailing that that middle feed had in game one. Sin, no. Sin just can't do anything with his movements this time around. Tomato is not farming whatsoever. No. Six last hits. Oh, that he's now gone. Oh, that's 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 really bad. yeah, that's really nice. that's really really bad. They've been pulling the lane back pretty nicely on the side of Vega, so he can't even like dagger for the last hits. I mean, sure, he, he's got a Magnus, so catch up with the PA is a game that he can play. Sure, and Kezu is extremely farmed yes. and leveled. And you know, there's a, there's going to be that portion of the game where the, the Magnus can carry. He he gets good RPs. That can set up for a lot of gold going the way of the PA. Yeah. And empower is all you need. Technically, this PA doesn't need items to wipe the team with the Empower and with a good setup from an RP. Zayat stops. Syndrome's trying to commit. Charge connects. They won't be able to chase under the tower, though. So it is a little awkward right now for midder feed. They don't really have great places to lane. Cancel does not want to lane mid versus that sniper because of the Night Stalker roaming around at the moment. He's just kind of jungling as a Zeus. So now it's sniper's about to be seven, and Zeus is still not six. But definitely lacking damage at the moment, and Lane's just looking to be a bit of a blunder now for Minter Feed. But recoveries being made, slowly but surely. PA getting the farm top. Night nice Stalker gonna now match that movement, going toward top, try to put the pressure on. He's in. He tries to get out of there, but the power strike comes in. Perfect time by Zayats. Oh, she will still make it out with that charge. Very, very close. And Oh, bottom lane, nightmare set up. They are going to look for the skewer back, but a nice telekinesis means that it's not going to happen. In fact, oh, Sin ended up coming in vision after life. Gets the vision required for the assassinate to come through. They're chasing. They're looking for that Aloha dance kill. They do have the dagger slow. They're moving in. Tomato pops the stick charges, but the shockwave's going to be juked out. Aloha dance is still alive for now. Finally goes down, but G's coming with a rotation. Picks up not just the PA, but the Bane as well. Triple kill for G as he gets those kills off quick succession. He killed Sind in the middle. And lane. Kezu. Get away. Is that something actually being cancelled there? I think he got out of range for a moment. Now he's back in range. He's going for hey. it again. He's able to get he's it. He's got it this time. Ultra kill. Oh, G. And he's got another shrapnel. I mean, spike. I told you, you got to watch out for the G sniper. Is he going for a rampage? Get, get the rampage. rampage. Come on, seven he's and a half minutes to give it to the boy. Seven They've minute got it. rampage. Okay. I've got Jeez, I told you. Is he going to get a double? It's a double rampage. Oh, no, it's not. It's a double oh, rampage. The it. earliest double rampage in the history of Dota. It has to be. It absolutely has to be. That's going to be new records set there by G. Quick I draw actually, indeed. I, I don't double think I've Double rampage. Seen like that happen. Ooh. Oh, laddie. Look at that. That gold as well now. 4.1k in the sniper. G. Absolutely nailing it there. Great rotation, and, and the sniper insane. is just so strong at this stage of the game. <laughs> with, with the, the amount of disable that his yeah. team have around him, he he just sits there peeping him. Yeah, with the Venjora and the Wave of Terror, it just gives him a little bit more bonus. But yeah, they had the the way to be able to chase, and we're gonna see it again. The final two kills on Kezu. Afterlife just being that tanky Night Stalker. It's really oh. working out for them with the lane swap that they did, and then Weeha just dying to strap on. Right? Yeah, it's gonna feel pretty good for Jean right here. And then we see Sid as well. He's going to join his teammates. He's like, guys, I'm here too. Sim was like, that rampage wasn't enough for you. 
I'll give you a second one. I'll let you double down. G, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely blowing the feed away. And up top. Let's to move in. Telekinesis onto We Are, dragged back. So they, are, they are, they're killing it. Afterlife has, he's yeah. like, I'm never playing Tusk again. Absolutely, he was Pick very mad after that game one. Yeah, he's, his movement's perfect this I'm game. sure he didn't want to play it. I mean, you said in the draft, what, he was on someone else. They probably was like, yeah. you've got to move. And I thought, I really don't want to. And he did it, and then he was like, see guys, I told you so. Don't make me do that again, we'll lose. Yeah, his movement's been perfect though. Four yeah. minutes hit, he literally TP'd bottom as soon as he hit level five. And then now he had darkness, instantly popped darkness and made more moves happen. And they've even been stacking a bit for Zayat. So Zayat's on the tanking, able to clear up a triple stack. And now they're going to try it up and continue their aggression. But it is daytime now, so maybe they want to just like sit back a little bit. But the line is drawn. They want to continue the pressure bottom with that max vengeance aura. Yeah. And they know right now that there's the catch up. That's the only way mid, mid or feed can actually do anything. Is yeah. This PA is not, not a hero at the moment. He's slowly but surely climbing up. But as you say, it's going to still take a lot of time for Tomato to get where he needs to on this PA in this game. And the pressure really is on from Vega Squadron. We said it from the draft. If they can keep on top from the start, Radiant it's a game that they can put, they can, they've got a lot of good fights. Especially with the start from Venge and oh, Zayat. I mean, he's out. I think he's fine. They found Spin. a D-Ward at least. Right? Spin can't go for that charge. Although I don't think if he could get some sort of a swap initiation to kick things off. But middle feet do have... Do have a fair few numbers down here. For that reason, Vegas Squadron will be careful. How they lead him with their with the carry pen. 3k gold lead already though, and 4k experience. They are definitely cruising at the moment. Mid repeat just, yeah, needs to be to be full recovery. Sit bottom, don't let them take your towers early. Just spam that shockwave, get the blink dagger, and then win, win through team fights. That's going to be the big way for them to get back in this. Because we did say, we still did say, you know, there is a Zeus ulti to be able to find where the sniper is sitting. They might actually be able to find a catch on fire. They have to use the RP, but they don't have mana for skewer. Oh my goodness, that is good. I mean, they do get the kill, but it's, it's so messy okay. at this stage. It's, they're having to throw a lot of that, and that's, it's just a sand kick. It's space. It's space for the PA to farm. Sure. Though, but yeah, yeah, they just want to defend the tower and get whatever kills they can. It's messy, though. And G still loving life. This is a, he has not been punished at all in these early stages. They've found it very hard to get to the sniper. Yeah, he got a great build up already. Treads Maelstrom and the farm's just going to continue to fly in for G. It's nice that I like the one thing that they did with the changes that I don't think people were talking about too much is how when you're an agi hero, we've been seeing a lot of in heroes going double no on mid, right? But when you're an agi hero, it's awkward to go double Wraith Bank because you only get one Akila. But now double Wraith Bank's worth it because you build into Hurricane Pike. So he, he has the double Wraith, but he's building into Maelstrom first. But eventually we will definitely see that Hurricane Pike picked up this game. We hot? Playing for it. The assassinate. They're going to have a good chance of getting it. And they've got it. G. Again, from mid to bottom lane. He's always there when it's needed. They've got the bling pickup on Kezi. And they are really relying on Kezi to bring out the big RPs. He needs to just follow Tomato and give him empower. But us. even when that's, even if he does get the RPs, they've got so many ways of turning around. Though. Yeah, they've got sure. with the guns. Bottom tower I think that fallen. they don't they don't really want to be going for big team fight plays okay. still for them. They want to just like get these small pickoffs and just let the PA get back in the game because they are they definitely are like oh my I mean there's a rampage at seven minutes you know you're in a pretty bad spot. Seven a double minute, rampage. Seven minute double rampage. Looking that they want to dive cancel here they have a ward behind the tower too. Yeah, throws the ulti. Got a check. And he knows they're ulti. after. Radiance Doesn't get the last hit though, fortified. on the ward. Mid tower, to gonna be pressured by Vega with these auras. Radiance they should be able to take it just tower. fine with G positioned attack. way behind. When Vega has blink tanking, they can really just, just roll out of control. Absolutely. They can, I mean, it's, it life gets so hard for cancel. And Dyer's for tomato, these are two cores that... Oh no. Oh, They've got God. him. No. We are trying to TP out, but they catch him out with the vision. It's another death for mid or feed. Yeah, Two and is... six on Weeha this game. Already. He's ha more than half of the deaths for his team. That'll happen though, you know, they got aggro tri and they... I guess they just, they wanted to really stick to it, but it's, it's really have heavily impacted them. You're almost thinking like, yeah, they should have probably somehow swapped this up. 
yeah. so that the PA wasn't shut, shut down so that Cinderin could actually play his hero properly because when you're playing Spirit Breaker on the Triver's Try, you're not doing anything. You're just kind of like chilling, watching them, and you can maybe get some counteractive charge kills, but it's very unlikely. What about this one? So Slayer on the Rubik, he's, he's settling for the Sol Ring strengths rather than the Arcane boots on Rubik. Okay. Sounds good. I yeah. mean, Sol Ring is, you don't get the mana regen from it anymore, but it gets you tankier, so that 6 strength is nice. Radiant structures are fortified. With 14 minutes in, Vega Squadron putting pressure onto to middle feed, safe lane tier two, and taking over the jungle is is very key mm -hmm. this game because as we say, they need to play the catch up with the PA, oh. and if the jungle's not safe to go into. It's massively yeah. limited in the area that you can actually look to farm. Yeah, taking these taking these towers early is really important. I, uh, the Sol Ring Tranquil thing also, they're playing versus Zeus, right? So he wants Tranquil boots. True. Yeah, it took me. I was like, wait a minute, it's definitely another reasoning. And they don't really need anyone. None of one on their team is this big mana user, right? Like. No, no, they don't no, really no. need a pair of mana boots on their team. It's like Sand King maybe needs some mana, but he doesn't really. With a wand, you're just fine as a Sand King. Yeah, you've got more than enough mana to get out a couple of stuns yeah. and an Epi in a fight. Oh, he went for a Dominator on Afterlife. I really like oh, that. That hey, is he, an item that we just don't see. Yeah, he queued up the Midas initially, and I was like, oh, I'm okay. not too crazy about the Midas, but so I, I got, like the Dominator. Yeah, he's got the, the Ice Armor coming out from the Frost Mage at the moment. Yeah, it's just aura. Around them. Right? I think running the Aura Strat with Sniper Revenge is, is, is very strong. Okay. Sin. Getting surrounded here. Going for the charge on the Zyats with Wee High. We've got the swap, and there we have it to break it, but it, it's a little late. There's a little bit kill still happens. Slayer turns up ready for the turnaround. They'll take one soon, looks to TP out. Again, Vega Squad, they're, this time round, this is just perfect gameplay from them. Every time the trades happen, they favor them. Double kill. Picked yeah. up for a low hard answer. He's getting involved in the action. G is still so far ahead this game, as he's not only got the Maelstrom, but Mask of Manus as well. He is so ready to fight. He knows that even at this day, if he pulls the Mask of Manus and the, the PA jumps on him, I, I still don't, I don't think Tomato... Oh, okay, maybe with his completed Mask of Manus and the Blightstone, the, they can kill this Sniper. He wants to be able to farm. But there's so much disabled. Yeah, it's, yeah. St it's still hard for Tomato until he finds the BKB stage of his game. Yeah. We did see the Kaya getting picked up on Zeus. We got a Kaya pick up. Okay. Pretty... In I mean, it's great with... Zeus, Bella. Yeah. Everyone used to go Aether Lens for that reason on the hero. You don't get the cast range, which is unfortunate, but do a lot of damage. But this Roche is dying. Do you get cast range talent? The last one. Oh, the last one. And to the Roche, but they go. And it's dead so fast. They can't stop this. They know it's going on with the Thunder Gold's Wrath, but they have no chance of getting in. And with the HP regen aura and with the Ice Ogre, they pretty much are completely sustained. They don't even have to go back or anything. They don't have to reset. They continue their onslaught. 7k gold lead for them. PA just still in absolute recovery mode. Nowhere near it. And we haven't seen anything big come out with the Blink Dagger from Kezu yet. Nope. No chance to, to find the RPs that he needs. Coming out. And I think, as we said, it's just from the start, it's been just very smart lane decisions for Vega Squadron. They, they made the good call on the lanes. And it made it very hard for Sim to play his game. It yeah. looked like he just wasn't prepared to, to have this aggressive trial and come at him. It, it just seemed like middle feet didn't have a plan B. Yeah, yeah definitely not. And they don't really have great heroes to push out lanes now. It's just the Shockwave and Zeus. Let's, but Zeus is now playing as defense. So is Kezu as Mag. You can tell that they're, they're like, we don't really know what we want to be doing here. They have a Bane. Weeha split pushing bottom is a Bane. That's when you know it's like, this, 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 the whole game plan is just screwed up here. For mid or feed. And Vegas just kind of continue this ball, the ball wrong, and they're going to take out the last few towers. Just a clockwork. It's looking really tough for mid or feed to get back in this one. Jeez, nearly got completed Hurricane Pike. It's there. now probably given the goal to do so. There's smoke behind the tower. Cinder and oh. charges through them. It does get past the Burrow Strike. Oh, he's trying to TP out. It's not going to work. Telekinesis there from Slayer. G just turns his attention towards the cow. Oi. Sin's gone. Kezu's trying to get in good position for an RP, but with none of the rest of his team around, that's not something that he wants to go for. He's just got to cut the creep wave. That's all he can do when this amount of pressure is being piled on. From Vegas. Oh, they've got the stolen charge. It's coming in. Slayer closes the gap, sets up for the Burrow FP. Telekinesis is holding Kezu down in place. He's got a skewer. It's not going to save him. Slayer. Making the plays. The two supports killing one of the core heroes. 
Zeus trying to farm some neutral creeps into them, but Vegas is going nice. They're, 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 they're ready to go. Swapping counts for back. The Chris do come through. Oh, They'll God. lose the Vengeful Spirit. And we are setting up with a very nice Nightmare and Fiend's Grip, holding them together. Massive bar strike comes in, but it's not enough to keep Vega alive. G is taken down once. Zyatz as well. This is what Middle Feet needed. They'll turn towards G. The crits fly through. Mad middle Feet. Okay, that's, that's something they can't defense. really have happen. Oh, Slayer. Slayer, could he do this? Oh, he, he really just it broke hands. Oh, is it? No, is he going to make some plays in? No, he can't do it. The charge comes oh. in. If he had another second, he, he would have gotten one more kill. If he, he had, had done that. Ball. That would have been insane, but he didn't. And I mean, they, they just gave up so much. Actually. That was a big swing. Like, their experience is now leveled out. Awesome. Look at how aggressive this swap is. Look at the position where he gets swapped into. I mean, that's greedy. It does force the buyback out from the Magnus, but it's absolutely worth it. And really, look at this movement from Weehart coming in from the back with a Glimmer Cape. Positions them perfectly for the RP. And then it's game over. Maybe if Zayat still had the, uh, the, uh, the epicenter for that. I think that would have been just, different, but still. That's so bold of them to try to go for that move. They're going high ground versus a Zeus, boost, uh, Zeus mag lineup. You don't even know if the mag doesn't have a buyback, so. Yeah. Great buyback coming out from Kezu. Weeha's positioning, though. Somehow he has a Glimmer Cape. I don't know how the hell he farmed a Glimmer Cape on this Bane, but he did do it. And yeah, they still have a lot of damage, and this Zeus is pretty tanky. You know, he took the six armor talent, so even okay. though he got swapped in, pretty durable. No, yeah, he's not an instant kill. They have got good disable around them, as we saw. And now they've got, I mean, they've got, their damage solution is there. They've got Veil and Kaya on the Zeus, so Cancel does a disgusting amount of magical, and yeah, Phantom Assassin's back. It's got Mask of Madness Desolator. So that's a very big turn of events. I mean, they, they're ahead in experience now from Interfeed. Very, very important for them after their disastrous early game. I think it's going to the point after your You've got to do stuff when that RP is down. Because pushing into it when it's up is, is almost a no-go. They do have to blink on, blink on, on Slayer. Okay. So we'll look towards some sweet plays from him. We've already seen some very nice steals. There's no doubt about that. Weeha looking for the kill bottom. Glimmer Cape's behind the wave. Oh. Whoa, whoa. Oh, gets to sleep, but there's no one even close. Yeah, to you, you got to run away with you. And he will. Top lane afterlife. Has been hunted down. Spending Kezu with the cat. So tanky, but he should be able to get brought down. Even with the hood, it cancel going for the chase. The movie speed's gonna kick he's back fast. in though. Oh no, they're not gonna get him. Oh, he's so down speeding. Bottom lane. And they get what we have on. They do, they finally managed to chase him down. He doesn't get away with going for the cheeky nightmare on his Zayats. I'm surprised they didn't get the wow. Night Stalker is just incredibly durable. With the hood dominator pickup. I like how everyone just makes the no field aggressive now. I like almost never see it being defensive anymore. Everyone just toggles it instantly into an uh, offensive no field. I mean, I, I guess this is what with the the nerf and the SK. Yeah, and, and what are you scared? I mean, sure, the Zeus. Zeus does would be lot. nice to have it defensive against that. Yeah, but as you say, I've been seeing like everyone like, who plays it just turns, instantly toggles it aggressively. Almost everyone. I don't want to claim so they Vegas continues wanting to keep that pressure going my map from Slayer the leading and for the change does think we are pretty much gone and Sinner and he has to he has to cancel that yeah no way that he goes in after the back man Sinner keep, keeps getting charge he should be he, should, he didn't use the empowering haste that time or the last time you got to use empowering haste after you cast the charge because then he always steals empowering haste We've already seen Slayer make one good play with the charge this game. No Alpha Wolf tough. now picked up from the Humma Dominator, so G has that double stacking aura. He's doing 250 per hit on this sniper already. So this is the way they should play it. Slow siege. Don't need to swap anybody out. If you're all spread out properly, you see Slayer is actually probably spams targeting lift on top of G Can right now. Yep. Oh! Exactly. He knew it. Like you oh, saw how he, he was it. facing him. Yeah. You can't go for those type of plays as a mag. If you see Rubik oh. facing your the guy you're trying to skewer, there's no way you're gonna get that in time. Oh my goodness! And that is your mag down for 40 seconds, and they're trying to move it on the base. Now, life will be turned towards. They get the swap back onto cancel. Zeus is controlled. He'll buy back straight away, but the epicenter is already cleaning up mass kills, setting up for G to just sit on the back lines as this sniper. He hasn't had to, to step foot into the base. He will do now to make sure he can get all the hits in. 
And that back to regen. It's, it'll put him off a little bit, but the creeps now come back in range. It's gone. A bottom racks clean up by Vega. It's it's looking. Like I think this game may just be over. 22 to 9, 14 K. What a turnaround from game one. Vega really cleaning up their act, coming in with a much better lineup. I mean, it, when the sniper gets a double rampage at seven minutes in, you, you kind of know the game's going to be hard for the opponents, and it won't quite be over. As they do hold, they're looking for the chase down onto Slayer. Should be able to get him. Yeah, they get the clean up there. But Rax was flamed. Yeah, 15k gold deficit. They can come back, but it's so hard. Especially when, you know, that, that type of magpie. Your Rubik, the Rubik. That was what he's saying. And he I'm literally like, said it. Samo is said it. looking at his sniper. He's like, this guy's going to try to blink skewer him. Like, that's what any Rubik player would think in his head. So yep, Vega now able to back up. They're gonna wait for Rubik to respawn, and then we'll probably see them go for that last, go for the next Roche, and then try to close out the game. So mid or feed, I think the next best play for them right now would be just smoke up and try to take the fight at the Roche. They're very close to BKB on Phantom Assassin though, but I don't think that they can give up this Roche on. Won't be up for another about, about 20 seconds. So. Tomato is really trying to farm that BKB. He's very close to it. That'll be incredibly important for them to try to go for these sieges into the back line. Yeah, that, that really is the item to make or break the scene fight. Yeah, I, I don't know I, if it's really going to have a massive input, but it's going to make it a lot I, I easier. I think it's going to be pretty huge, because then He's he can actually hurt. jump in onto a target and not... But they're so tanky now. Sure. Thing. Like, even a BKB sure. now on G... And a bottle double damage on the sniper. Oh, okay. All right, okay. The TV is in there. And they've got, like, the auras and everything from them. They've got so many different defensive aspects. Now Slayer actually turned the no field back defensively. Okay. As well. Still, what? They've only lost one tier one in this game. They've fortune. They've got such good control of the map. I mean, it really feels like this game, the, the Zeus pick just... It's not done a lot. It's not working out, no, no, definitely not. Like, sure, you can see what they, they wanted to make plays early on. They wanted to have Sinned and we move around the map, but... they could. Yeah, they couldn't move. I think it's just they the aggro. Have, yeah, they really did not have a plan for the aggro tri -lane. It's it, the aggro tri -lane and, you know, there's a reason we see Night Stalker banned every game, yeah. and I think this is a very good reasoning to do so. Like, Afterlife, it hit minute four, and he took over the entire map. Like, Cancel had to farm jungle as a Zeus because of it. The bottom lane got completely de just demolished. I mean, I, I still think this hero is incredibly powerful yeah. for those such reasons. You, just, you lose map control four minutes in the game. That's, that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, look at this. They're trying to fight Metal Feet. They lead it with the Nether Strike onto Slayer, but straight up. Look at the damage from G. Just tears into one. Zyas jumps in with the Faro Strike. Tomato pulls the BKP, but G's just sitting there right clicking into it. Tomato will get the kill. The DD, though. But he's yeah. gone. G picks up a triple kill, just picking mid or feed apart. Cancel on his way back is not going to get home. Four dead again. This time, no buyback. I mean, this really should be GG at the G. 13 1 and 4 on the sniper. Because we can't find the RP opportunities. They need this RP to get the team fights going. But there's no PA for 40 seconds, even if yeah. Kezu buys back. There's just no follow -up. GG is cool. They tap out. Woo. And what a swing around. Game one, middle feed, absolutely owning it. But game two, Vega Squadron couldn't have made it look any easier. You said the, the G sniper, right? The, the G, sniper G sniper went out of control, but I think he was He's good on afterlife it. really okay. over He's the top of this game. He made it. He literally made this game look so easy. He me. made up for his game one performance. Yeah, definitely. But no, no Pick more Night Tusk. Tusk. No more Tusk. More Night <laughs> Stalker indeed for Vegas squash. If they were still always like that, but uh, that, again, not really a lot to be said. This was a very, you know, flip.